you know, what about hip hop radio stations and the role that they are playing? I mean, you know, you and I, for instance, we've been involved in a lot of the activist work here in Washington, D.C. We can't get any burn from hip hop stations, but they'll put the mayor on there to talk about anything. New York, more or less the same thing. You don't see them put the activists on there, but any political figure can show up. I mean, is this sort of another, I don't know if it's like, quote unquote, cultural appropriation, but I mean, it almost seems like a a counterinsurgency the way they use it. Well, I would agree with that. And I think more than anything, and, and, and I do think it goes beyond uh, mere cultural appropriation. I mean, it's deeper than, say, like, you know, a phenomenon of Macklemore or something, right? It, um, I think it actually speaks— But you know what, though? I feel like people are just too on Macklemore. I mean, I, I hate to interrupt you, but, like, w- was it culture? Yes, but he was at the protest in Seattle where they shut down the highway. They maced him in the face. And then you look at these people—what's uh, the dude's name? G-Eazy, the white dude— who is just like all frat rap, I'm drunk, probably date raping people because that's what white frat boys do, I guess. Um, uh, Whoa, slander, but hey, what are you going to do? And it just seems like, to me, he was like the best one. He was owning it more than any other white rapper that like, yes, I am white. Yes, this is a black art form. And like, I'm going to be out here with y'all in in a way that I'd never seen any hip hop artist ever do. Well, uh, that's White hip hop artist. Well, that's fair, because I mean, I mean, if we're talking about white rappers, I mean, you know, I, I'll take Paul Wall and all he talks about his diamonds in his mouth and codeine. So, I mean, you, you may have a point there. But, but even still, uh, uh, to the issue, I think it speaks more to the sort of uh, hyper-commodification uh, of, of hip-hop, right? To the point where, you know, um, I think I heard, it was Davey D, based out in L.A., was talking about how he goes into these radio stations, and a lot of times they can't even play a record uh, if it's older than a certain amount of years or a certain amount of months. And we all know how it is with like the repetition and stuff like that to where, you know, you hear a song so many times, you're not sure if you even actually like it or if it's just been kind of drilled into your head. You see what I'm saying? And so on that same uh, sort of uh, corporate model, that same sort of uh, ruling class orientation is why we get some of uh, these uh, ruling class analysis, you know, from people uh, uh, that come in like Hillary Clinton, particularly because I believe that was actually the Breakfast Club she was was on. Mm. And, 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 And I think more so than any hip hop show, for whatever reason, that particular show seems to really be the gateway for mainstream forces to try to speak to uh, black youth culture. And um, yeah, because I know, you know, I know Louis Farrakhan came through there too to pump uh, uh, the Justice or Else thing, right? And so that's really become the nerve center for a lot of that stuff. And it's interesting to your point about, um, you know, Muriel Bowser, because I know we had a, I mean, we were struggling against her because she was trying to implement this draconian crime bill, essentially trying to flood Southeast D.C., with police uh, ostensibly to um, address this uptick in crime, which was based on, you know, statistics that were dubious at best. But um, this was something that was basically going to criminalize uh, poor and working class uh, black people in Washington, D.C., and had the audacity to say that she wanted to make Black Lives Matter more than a hashtag, even though she was engaging something that was going to actively uh, have a negative impact on the material conditions of black folks in the city. So that can get a space. But for us to call out, uh, you know, the negative impact of that, uh, we didn't have that same sort but of I would, I would also, too, push back a little on um, the radio not um, uh, being more about this mainstream or, or corporate shock. Because I actually think, and you all who are more into the music part of the radio can, can push back on me. But I don't think the radio is as relevant as it used to be because everyone's now doing podcasts from Lil Duval to like, uh, I, mean, I mean, just everyone's doing podcasting now, particularly about The Breakfast Club. They've, as Sean said, have had everyone from Louis Farrakhan, Bakari Sellers in South mm. Carolina, Michael Blake, who's um, in the assembly in, in the state assembly in New York. They had D. Ray McKesson, Dr. Umar Johnson. I mean, it just goes from like extreme to extreme. And of course, occlusive of all of the rappers and Hillary Clinton. So I actually think podcasts, are picking up more steam because they can be a little more flexible. So I would I would push back on that a little bit. Uh, Sean, do you think that they asked Umar Johnson about the conscious stripper controversy on the two hundred fifty thousand dollars uh, that he stole from people? But I, I don't want to get on that. But Monty, go ahead. So, so I mean, and I can definitely use like the local radio stations for example. Like, there's nothing about the local radio stations as far as what they air that's decided locally. Mm. Um, their playlist isn't decided locally. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, I mean, they. DC is forced to uh, to to carve out a go go hour because they just wouldn't be able to survive. Mm-hmm. But that's getting them. Um. So 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 here's the thing. So I I, I agree with you. I, I think that the podcasts are taking up a space that radio once had. But 
getting rid of thinking radio is important, which means that you're not going to reach the people who have the lowest common denominator of media access. The people who have nothing else, yeah. who don't have regular internet access, who don't have podcasts on their cell phone. You know what I'm saying? They just have the radio. Yeah. So yeah. they only get the impression that the radio gives them. And, and the, radio doesn't do, the radio doesn't do anything local until um, they're trying to give something away and it's part of something promotional. Or some crime happens that's so heinous. That's so heinous that they have to do some kind of um, town hall about it, quote unquote. But even in that town hall, they will continue to play the destructive, misogynistic. Like, like they literally will go from, man, we got to stop killing each other to playing the, la- the latest Young Thug track. You know what I'm saying? Like, Thank you. And, and, and they don't under, like the radio doesn't understand that, like, I don't expect the radio, I don't expect commercial radio to be um, in the forefront of social issues. I expect them to play music. But if they think that they're, that if they think the world needs to be a better place and their job is to play music, they should play music that makes the world a better place. Like, that's their job. And, and I don't, they don't need to have the conversation, but don't play Young Thug while telling brothers not to kill each other. No, I, I hear you. I mean, it's an unbelievable, and it's like a chicken and egg type thing. They say, well, this is what people want to hear. But if I drive from, like, D.C. to New York, it doesn't really matter if I change the station. It's the same 10 songs, almost in the exact same order, which... If nothing else shows you that payola, which for people who don't know is when record companies pay radio stations to pay, your song is not dead. I have heard a radio um, personality around the time when 50 Cent stopped being popular play the latest 50 Cent song, open up the phone lines, and everyone, man for woman for man for woman, saying this is a horrible song, and the DJ saying at the end, well, yeah, we're going to keep playing it. 